I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be neediness and self-worth. I've got two emails I'm going to go through with you. The first one is from a guy who basically has the same kind of problem that I used to have when I was younger, which is that, and this a lot of guys have this problem, which is they get around a woman they really like and they're really into, and they just completely lose their shit and either chase the woman right out of their lives or completely turn her off to the point whether she wants nothing to do with them or she sticks them in friend zone. And this particular guy, he's successful and things are going well for him, but he says when he gets around a woman he likes, he just, he loses it. And he says his lack of self-worth and his needy behavior is what drives her away. And the second email is a success story from a guy who first found my work after his girlfriend ditched him and he discusses how applying what's in my book, what's in my articles, and my videos has helped him get to a place where he really loves, values, and respects himself. And obviously that's had a dramatic impact on his success with women. And so he goes through how it's changed. So I have a quote that I wrote in this topic and then we're going to go through both the emails. So the quote says, we all act in ways that are consistent with the story that we tell ourselves or the perception that we hold about ourselves. It does not matter if that view is accurate or not. Most people do not realize how their negative self-talk influences their decisions and actions. If you feel peaceful, relaxed, awesome, successful, confident, and abundant, you typically will take action that is consistent with someone who is deserving of success and who expects to succeed. If you are uncertain, fearful, and timid, and feel like you are unworthy or undeserving, you typically will take action that is consistent with someone who is not deserving of success and who expects to fail. Therefore, when you do not feel confident or worthy, you must visualize and imagine yourself as being surrounded by the circumstances you really want to create and take action and act as if it will work out eventually. Successful people take action despite their fears and an uncertain future. Failures avoid action and seek to settle for mediocrity and a non-existent quick fix to gain certainty and peace of mind because their beliefs are in conflict with their goals and outcomes. Let's go ahead and jump right in. And by the way, for those of you that have not read my book yet, you can actually read it for free by going to my website, understandingrelationships.com, and just subscribe to the newsletter. Just look for the one where it shows the book and the free audio lessons. And once you see that it works for you, and obviously it's really good information, and for those of you that are new that may have been following me or you're not convinced I know what I'm talking about, if you read the book for free, I mean, it's totally no risk. All you got to do is your email and your name and submit that and you'll get a link to read the book. And then once you see that it works for you, that I really do know what I'm talking about, then you can go and do an audible free trial of my book or get a paperback or a Kindle version. So I mean, there's no risk to you other than your time and your name and your email address to get access to the best of everything I teach. And of course, you've got all the videos and articles that I've written as well. Because all these, all these emails that I answer in here, it's answered under the premise that you've at least learned the fundamentals in the book. And these are real world examples of guys that are in situations or they're struggling, maybe having similar problems to what you're experiencing. And you can learn how to properly apply the book and custom tailor it or the wisdom and the principles and the fundamentals in the book to each specific situation. So with that said... Let's go through the first email. It says, hey coach, I just started listening to your YouTube videos and I just bought your book. I'm 32 and I've been making the same mistakes over and over. That's exactly what was happening to me. And after many, many years, my teenage years, through most of my 20s, up until like the latter half of my 20s, that's when I re things really started to click for me. And I just got tired of it. I got tired of every really great opportunity blowing it and not being able to figure out what I was doing or saying that was causing these women to go from being really interested to eh, or I just think of you as a friend 
and it just didn't click. And as a man, that is like one of the most frustrating and demeaning things that you can experience as a man, not being able to date the quality of woman that you want. Same thing goes with your peer group, not being able to have the kind of friends that you want and spend your time with the kind of people that you want. So he says, I'm way too sensitive and I can be needy due to self-worth issues, which is frustrating because I'm a catch and I'm successful, but I can never remember that when I'm dating a girl. So it's like, what is self-worth? Self-worth to me is being able to look in the mirror and love yourself as you are without expecting yourself to change and being okay with where you are in life, whether you're in college and striving to graduate so you can get the kind of job or career you've always wanted, or you're in your 30s and you haven't gotten that promotion that you wanted, you haven't really gotten to that place that you wanted in your career yet. It's always being, but no matter where you are, it's being able to accept yourself as you are with all your flaws, with all your faults, because it's like once you accept who you are, as you are, the way you talk, the way you look, the way your body is shaped, the way your voice sounds, nobody can use your flaws against you when you really just don't give a damn anymore. And if you notice, if you've spent your time around a lot of people who are older, they tend to, to get that way as they get older where they just they got no fucks to give. They don't care. They, they don't worry about what other people think. And the sooner you can get to that place in your life where you stop trying to live your life according to other people's expectations and you're no longer worried about people liking or accepting you because when you like, love, value, and accept yourself, it doesn't matter what other people think. You see a really hot girl and you really like her and you think she's into it and then she just shoots you down or rejects you or she has a boyfriend, that's a win, that's a victory because at least you showed up. If you go after that job you really wanted and you don't get it, your happiness should not depend upon whether or not you got that job. Your happiness should depend upon whether you actually took action and you become okay and content with, even if you failed, at least you took action. You got to at least show up. I think it was Woody Allen that says like 80% of success in life is just simply showing up. As a matter of fact, there's a really great um, Lucille Ball quote that I posted to my Instagram recently and it's a really great quote on loving yourself, self-worth and the importance of that and she said love yourself first and everything else falls in line. You really have to love yourself to get anything done in this world. And that was Lucille Ball, a famous American, American actress. One of the things that I learned from Tony Robbins many years ago, and I did an article on this, it's, he says that success is 80% psychology and 20% mechanics. In other words, the psychology portion of it is, do I believe I'm worthy? Do I deserve it? Do I deserve to have a really amazing, spectacular person love me just for who I am with all my flaws and faults? Do I deserve to have that really awesome job that I've always wanted in life? Because once you believe you're worthy, or at the very least, if you visual, it's just like I said in the quote, if you visual, visualize yourself as being surrounded by the conditions that you want to create, and you imagine and you fantasize, how would I think? How would I act? What would my life be like? What would my responses be? If I had an overabundance of everything, if I had an overabundance of job opportunities, if I had an overabundance of people to date, if I had an overabundance of investors wanting to invest in my startup dream, if I had an overabundance of health, if I had an overabundance of people that wanted to hang out and spend time with me, if I had an overabundance of the kinds of places that I wanted to live. If you had too much of everything in your life, you never would be in a rush to do anything or make a decision because you would need to analyze your options, look at and weigh the pros and cons of each. When it came to dating, do I really like this person enough to want to spend a day with them or an evening with them or a weekend with them or a night with them? You got to get data. But if you're in a scarcity mindset, you're, you fear you're going to lose everything. 
And when you fear you're going to lose everything, you're in a rush. You're in a state where you're, you're neurotic, you're fearful, you're worried about things. And so all of your actions tend to try to be forceful. And when it comes to human interactions, when you're trying to sell another human being on you personally, whether it's somebody you want to date or something to do with your career or your ability to do the job that you want the promotion for, your ability to sell yourself on that person is going to determine how they're going to respond to you. And if you're in a matter of fact kind of state of mind where of course this person is going to want to date me, of course I'm going to get that job, of course that investor will want to invest in my stuff, of course that potential customer will buy my product or service. When you have that kind of an attitude, you're going to act in ways and you're going to put out the vibe that resonates with that. And the importance of it is just like the quote from Thich Nhat Hanh, which is, you must love in such a way that the person you love feels free. If you have an abundance in everything, you'll be able to love in a non-attached way to where you extend your invitation and then it's up to the other person to accept or pass or maybe they'll go think about it. But you're like, give me a call if you change your mind. Give me a call if you'd like to hang out. Give me a call if, you're, if you change your mind and you're willing to sell that particular item to me at the price that I can afford to pay or that I want to pay. When you're okay with that, you give that person the freedom to come and go and therefore the people that are in your life, they're there because they chose to be there versus when you're in a fearful state and you feel needy, you feel unworthy, you try to force them to stay there. So everybody that interacts with you is going to feel like in some way, shape or form, they're losing their freedom by interacting with you, whether it's a lover, whether it's a potential client, a potential employer, people are going to treat you exactly how you perceive yourself to be. That's why it can be very helpful, like I mentioned in the quote, just to spend five or ten minutes every day when you get up or at some portion of the day, maybe when you're sitting in your car waiting to go in your job, just close your eyes and think to yourself about all the things you have to be grateful for and what life will be like 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now when you get from where you are right now to where you really want to be. You visualize yourself surrounded by the circumstances, surrounded by the life and lifestyle and the kind of people that you really dream about. How would you think? How would you act that's different than the way you normally show up? How would you view yourself? How would you respond to people that put you down or who don't treat you in a favorable way? You wouldn't let it get under your skin. You wouldn't be bothered because when somebody doesn't accept your invitation, it just means, it doesn't mean you're rejected. It just means that you're not compatible. At the end of the day, you really want to spend your time with people who you're compatible with. So back to the email, he says, I have a girl that I've been seeing for two months and things were going really well, but I am sabotaging myself with coming off as being needy. So that, again, that tells me you're trying to force things. You're calling too much. You're trying to, to focus on getting her to kiss you instead of creating the circumstances where she feels safe and comfortable enough to where she wants to start touching you and reaching out to you and pursuing you. Because in essence, when you're trying to force something, women, your vibe is going to be off and women can sense that. It makes them not feel safe with you. It makes them not feel comfortable and they're going to close up and push you away or withdraw. Because again, it feel, they feel threatened like they're going to lose their freedom. That's why in your particular case, that's why it's so important to read the book 10 to 15 times. Again, you can subscribe to the newsletter and read it for free on my website. And once you feel comfortable enough with that, then go buy the Audible version. But you got to read it 10 to 15 times, especially because it helps rewire the way you think and view yourself. Because most of your problem, just like 80% of success is psychology and 20% is the actual mechanics. That's why a lot of times you'll see me say, read the book. You gotta learn the mechanics. If you believe you're worthy and you act in ways that are worthy, even if maybe deep down you don't feel you're worthy right now, if you continue to behave in ways that communicate you're worthy, 
then people will respond to you like you're worthy. Not everybody will, but the small percentage of the ones that do, those are the ones that you really want to be with anyways. And the more you apply what's in the book, the more that you see it works, the more you see that women really become predictable in a good way, then you lose your fear or worry about the outcome of what may or may not happen. It just happens effortlessly and naturally, just like the wind blowing or the sun coming up in the east and setting in the west, or the fact if you've ever sat on a beach, like you can obviously see the intercoastal behind me here, even if there's no boats going by, the water is still moving, the waves are still moving, the wind makes them move, the tides go up and down, no matter what's going on in our own world. So act as if, even if you're fearful. How would a confident person act? How would a person act who always gets, who always has things work out for them magically in the end, even if things go sideways? Like I just made an offer on a, a place to lease in this building that I looked at six, eight months ago. And I didn't get the property that I looked at six or eight months ago, but the one that I, I made an offer on yesterday, better property, and financially, it's a much better deal. And that was something that I learned in real estate, flipping foreclosure properties, because sometimes a deal would fall through and you know most people get pissed off because of the money they didn't make but typically the way my partners and i looked at it is you know what if a deal falls through we don't get that house the next one we'll make even more money on it or if the guy the person was going to buy our particular house if they don't end up buying it usually what would happen is like the appraisal would finally come in and it would be appraised at four or five ten thousand dollars more than we thought it would appraise for in fixed up condition and then we could make a little bit more money on the flip that's when I look at business transactions that's the way I always look at it. if something doesn't go right the first time or the first deal doesn't come together the one I actually end up getting will be a better deal the BBD the bigger better deal and when you're patient and you hold your outcome of what you want in your mind and you move towards that things fall by the wayside you're okay with that you get rejected by that girl you really want what happens is maybe six months later you meet somebody that's ten times better, ten times personality or is better for you than the other one. It always works out better in the end if you're patient and you're okay with things not working out initially. For example, I went to her work Thanksgiving party last night and things were great and I went back to her place. We started having sex and she said since she wasn't going to come and I stopped. She was pretty drunk. And we only went for about five minutes. Well, when she says something like that, again, what is making love? Making love is giving. You are physically penetrating her with your strength. And it's all about giving. And she says, oh, I'm not going to come. It doesn't matter. I'm still going to make love to you. It's that resistance. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling safe. I'm not feeling completely open to you. But when you're not affected, it's just like when a woman's on top and she says, are you going to come yet? I want you to come now. I want to come at the same time. And you don't. And she does. And then she can have more, more powerful orgasms after that because she felt your strength to resist. It's like she said she wanted you to do a certain thing, but you have your own agenda. You have what you're focused on personally. It's very powerful. In other words, it's like, especially when a woman senses weakness, she's going to jab you in all kinds of different ways like that because what she's really looking for is your strength. In other words, are you going to lose your shit or is it going to totally not bother you at all? She instantly rolled over and I was dumb enough to ask her if something is wrong. And when I have rolled over in the past, it was a bad sign. And he says, idiot. I mean, look at your self-talk. But I mean, the good news is you're able to self-diagnose and you know what you did wrong. I mean, if you're in the middle of making love and she says, I'm not going to come yet, it doesn't matter. Keep making it good for her. Keep, it, keep making it good for you. If you understand a woman's body and how to stimulate her, it's just a matter of time. It's not a matter of hope. It's simply a matter of time. What happened is you became impatient. You became fearful that you weren't good enough. 
And so what happened was you basically communicated by rolling over and, and getting off her that you weren't good enough, which is going to tend to piss her off more because you just showed, she tested your strength to see if you're weak and you communicated through your actions, through your body language, that you were weak. And you knew right away that you shouldn't have done it. And what did she say? Women help you when they like you. She said, I was overthinking it and worse than a girl. And he says in parentheses, she is right. Yeah. She said if she didn't want me here, she wouldn't invite me and to stop overthinking something to that extent. In other words, she's saying, I really like you and you're here because I want you here. But in your mind, you're telling yourself, I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve to have this woman care about me. And it's just a matter of time before I fuck something up or she gets tired of me and ditches me. So you're, you're constantly communicating, I'm not worthy, please reject me, please get rid of me. And you could only do that so much for, with a woman before eventually she just tires of it and says, fuck it, you're out of here. He says, it was a very, very weak moment and I'm hoping she doesn't run for the hills since I was being a bitch. Two weeks ago, she was sending me nude pictures and talking about how much she wanted to have sex and last week the tone of the text completely changed and now all the physical contact it started by me or the naughty talking text. Well, you shouldn't be sexting some girl that you're just kind of casually dating. Unless she's your girlfriend, you shouldn't be doing that. And especially talking about sex or using sexual innuendo when she's not open to it, not ready for it, all you end up doing is turning her off more. I feel like she's fading out a bit on the interest and I'm having to make all the physical contact. I know she likes me. How can I battle back from this? Well, in this particular case, don't do anything. Just go back to the once a week, just like I talk about in the book. She's gone cold, and it sounds like you're probably over-pursuing. So I would just wait until the following week. You know, if you saw her last on a Sunday and you haven't heard from her by Friday, call her up. Or if she's gone really cold, wait until that Monday. Because by giving her that time, she may reach out to you. And if she reaches out, then you'd be like, hey, great to hear from you. I want to see you. When you're free to get together or something along those lines, make a definite appointment, a definite day, a definite time to get together. And then hang out, have fun, and hook up. But you're, the, the big thing is that you just started reading the book is that you got to get through the fundamentals. But what's good, what I like about what you've done so far, you're starting to realize where you're going right and where you're going wrong. And the more you're aware of that, the more you can exercise emotional self-control because you can see when you act this way, when you act like a girl as she called you out on it, you're turning her off and pushing her away and then she's not as eager and as excited to reach out to you because now you've deflated in her eyes, if you will. You're not the man she thought you were. And by going back to the once per week, it gives her that space, it gives her that time because if you really were a weak pussy, you'd be calling her, blowing up her phone, which has probably happened to her with dozens and dozens of guys over the course of her life. And then when you don't do that, then she starts to think, well, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was a little too harsh on them. And sometimes they'll call you up and say, hey, I was kind of bitch the other day. I'm really sorry about that. But like I said, go back to once a week and ask her out. But like I said, as the book teaches, if you're following what's in there, you really don't have to pursue in the beginning for about the first two to three weeks and once the woman starts reaching out it becomes so frequent that there's no re need for you to reach out anymore then you can just wait to hear from her and when you do assume she wants to see you and make the next date and then that allows her to come to you at her own pace and I mean the bottom line is, attraction is not a choice women know within two three seconds that they like you or not and your problem is what you're starting to recognize is you're just talking them out of it and you're selling them on a version of you that's really totally an irrational fear because you are good enough to get this girl. You're hanging out and having fun and hooking up with her. But when you're with her, you, it's like you're going out of your way to tell her, hey, you really need to get rid of me because I really suck. It's a bad way to go, dude. But you're making progress. So and that's the important thing. And success is making progress. You're obviously starting to self-diagnose to see where you're going wrong. So that's great, man. Good job. Let's go to the second guy's email. It says, Dear Corey, I'm not writing to ask you anything in particular, but simply to thank you for what you do 
and how you've changed my life. What will be a one year anniversary this coming weekend, I fell ice skating and broke my ankle in two places while on a date with my long distance girlfriend from Scotland. I live near Belfast, Ireland. At the time, the relationship was eight months old and I had noticed her, disting, her distance, distancing behavior, as you say, slowly over time. Long story short, things ended just after Christmas. Honestly, although I cared for her and probably way too much, I had been led to your videos by two female friends who love your no-nonsense and humorous approach. Well, give your two female friends a, hey, a hug and a kiss for me and tell them thanks for recommending me. I mean, there's no higher compliment, especially than women recommending my work, which is great. I really appreciate that. And you tell your friends I appreciate them. And you should tell your girlfriends how much you appreciate them for introducing you to me. While I was laid up for this period, I watched a lot of your videos and I purchased your book. I could sense so much of me in your book and so much of the incompatibility of our relationship. I mean, relationships are supposed to be easy and effortless. If you have the same goals, you have the same values, you know, especially if you're looking to have a long-term relationship, it's always you're going to have the best results when you date women that have a good relationship with their mom and especially their dad. A woman who loves and respects her dad and has a good relationship with him is going to be very trusting of men. And they won't put up with bullshit from guys that don't know what they're doing either. But, you know, there's a lot of women out there that either grew up without a father or had a bad relationship with their father, and so they're not trusting. And their, their set point, their, their median of where they always are behavior-wise is always going to go to, you did something to hurt me, you don't care about me, you don't love me, there's something wrong. And they tend to become bitchy and emotional and complain and just cause unnecessary drama. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't mean that every girl who grew up without a father or a bad relationship with a father is a total nut or a total fruit loop. But if you want to give yourself the best possible chances for success is to date women that have a good relationship with their dad. And if the women don't, at least make sure that they're into self-help, self-development, and they've done the work on themselves to repair that. He says, I read, your, I read your book four times over a few weeks. I took my manhood back from her, as you say, and she ended it by text offering me the friendship card. I gave her the, give me a call if you change your mind, and needless to say, she didn't, LOL. Actually, when it ended, I felt free at last. Free to love and accept myself unconditionally. And for the first time in my life, I truly appreciate and love myself. Because until you love, value, and appreciate yourself, you won't let anybody else love and value and appreciate you. Like the guy in the first email. The girl liked him. But because of the negative view that he held of himself, remember, people will act consistently with how they view themselves to be, whether the view is accurate or not. And so if you don't love and value yourself, you're not going to let other people. And even when people go out of their way, even when they're making love to you in the back of your mind, you're still saying, no, nah, they're not going to like me. It's just a matter of time. And you literally talk them right out of it. You can do the same thing in a job interview. You have to maintain your emotional self-control. It's an essential skill that every man and every woman needs to learn. Your teaching has brought me to this point and beyond. I truly love myself now, and I'm more positive about everything in my life. I'm more successful than ever before in my own business as a Tyler. I have dated several girls this year, one of whom is 17 years younger than me at 35, and I am really happy. It feels great to love and accept yourself just the way you are. My broken ankle was a wake-up call to get me back on my road bike and start training harder than ever. I expect to cycle again in 20, 2017. It's like you literally hit the wall metaphorically, if you will, and you realize I have to change my approach and you have these two great women friends years that said, hey, there's this dude, Corey Wayne, go check him out. I purchased your audio version at the beginning of this week and I'm on my third passing already. As you say, I hear and remember new things each time and 20 times and beyond is my goal. Your work has woken me up and I'm slowly becoming the best version of myself 
and a 3% man. Thank you, Corey. Kind regards. So thanks for writing that great email success story and sharing it. So those are two good emails that really contrast. One guy is still struggling. Another guy has kind of got through that struggling phase. And again, if you haven't read my book yet, you can totally read it for free. It doesn't cost you anything other than your name and your email. Go to my website, understandingrelationships.com. Subscribe to the newsletter and it'll send you a link to your email where you can go to the members area and read my audiobook. And I will talk to you soon.